Last week, I traveled to Chicago for the POSIT conference, which was easily the highlight of my year. I want to start by extending a huge thank you to POSIT for hosting the conference and for having me there as a speaker. I got to meet so many incredible people. Thank you so much to everyone who made the experience so great. In this video, I'm gonna share with you some of the coolest things I learned about at the conference. I'm going to try to keep this video somewhat short, so I won't go into the details of anything I share, but I'll tell you where you can find more info if you're interested. Every single talk was incredible, and I encourage you to watch as many of the recordings as you can, because I can't fit everything in this video, even though I wish I could. For anyone who attended the conference in person, the video recordings for all the talks are already available, but for anyone who didn't attend, they should all be posted online for free soon. My guess would be sometime in the next few weeks. For that reason, I can't share the links to the talks themselves, but I'll put the name of the relevant talk and the speaker so that it's easy for you to locate later once the recordings are all publicly available. I'm going to split this video up into two themes cool new RStudio features, and cool new Cordo features. If you've seen my channel before, you know I've made a lot of videos about generative AI. There were a lot of talks about generative AI this year, all of which I highly recommend, but one of the big announcements is the introduction of GitHub Copilot integration into the RStudio IDE. Previously, you had to use VS Code. So this is a huge game changer for anyone who loves RStudio. Tom Mock unveiled this new integration, explaining all about what Copilot is and how the integration works in RStudio. If you're instead looking to use Copilot in VS Code, I've got a video on my channel that you can check out. Another announcement that was made was about the Shiny UI editor. This tool lets you build the user interface of a Shiny app using a drag and drop approach from within RStudio. This tool was originally announced at last year's conference, but it was in alpha. It's now in beta and has some really cool new features as well. Arguably the biggest reveal at the conference this year was Joe Cheng's talk about Shiny Live 4R. And okay, yes, this technically isn't something that's RStudio specific, but it's a prerequisite for the stuff I want to talk about for Cordo in part two, so I'm putting it here. You might be wondering what Shiny Live is. Last year, Winston Chang gave a talk on Shiny Live for Python, which was a way to run your Shiny for Python application completely in the browser, without the need for a server and without the need for the user to install anything. This was pretty game-changing, and it's really exciting that this is now available for R as well. Joe Chang does an amazing job at explaining all the details of Shiny Live for R in his talk, but the basic idea of how it works is that there are two languages that web browsers understand, JavaScript and WebAssembly, or WASM. Thanks to the WebR package, R can now be run in the browser using WASM. Cordo is about to see some amazing new features in version 1.4, which is currently available for download at cordo.org slash docs slash download slash pre-release or you can wait until it's out of pre-release, which is expected to happen sometime this fall. Charlotte Wickham gave a great overview of all the awesome new features that are part of V1.4, but I want to highlight one in particular and throw in a few extra Cordo related things. I think the feature I'm most excited for is executable and modifiable R code that can now be included directly in your Cordo documents. This is possible due to WebR and will make your Cordo documents completely interactive. For example, if you have a code chunk in your Cordo website, users will now be able to run that code from within their web browser without needing to install R or any packages. This is great for teaching people R. I should also mention that because of WebR, you can also include Shiny apps directly inside of your Cordo documents. There's also now a visual editor for Cordo in VS Code, which makes dealing with tricky syntax a lot easier. Carlos Scheidegger announced a new output format for Cordo that will make rendering PDFs much easier. This is possible due to Typist, which solves a lot of problems that people commonly experience with LaTeX. Typist makes it possible to create things like academic posters and newsletters with ease using Cordo. And if you're looking to make your Cordo projects look amazing, 
I recommend checking out the following three talks. Emil Wittfeldt gave a talk guiding you through how to create a custom theme for Cordo Reveal.js presentations. This was a really fun talk and it was easy to follow. In fact, I even followed his guide and made a theme myself that I used for my talk. Richard Ianen gave a talk on Cordo extensions and shared some awesome extensions for including icons in your Cordo projects. In particular, I'm really excited to try out the Lordicon extension, which includes tons of animated icons. He even put together some documentation of how to use this extension. Garrick Aiden Bowie gave a talk on a new package he's been developing called Epoxy. The package uses glue and provides awesome formatting that makes parameterized reporting using Cordo or R Markdown much easier. It can also be used in Shiny apps or in regular R scripts. Trying to find a way to condense all this awesome stuff I learned at this conference into a single video was really challenging, and I know I missed a lot that's very much worth mentioning, but I hope this at least gives you a starting point for some things to look into. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you find my videos helpful. I'm Melissa Van Bussel, and if you want to connect with me, you can find me on Twitter or LinkedIn, and the links for that are in my description.